Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All Off Road. I hope you all are well. In today's video, I will have a look at another battery bank. If you follow my channel, you know I have tested quite a few lithium battery banks over the past few months. And the Atom Power AP500X is another 500 watt hour battery bank. I won't make a long drawn out video and show you every test I run. But this will be a quick review with the facts and with what I reckon all the important information to make a purchase decision or not. I've been using the battery bank for the past three months around the house. Um, when I built the studio here, I had this battery bank in the studio and uh, charged my cordless batteries with it. I uh, run the radio of it, a fridge of it. So I have been testing it fairly in depth. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I usually want to test a product for at least 6 to 12 months. However, in regards to battery banks, that's not really practical because they are usually replaced within 12 to 16 months with a new model. And it's no point reviewing something which is not long available. So please take that into account. In none of my battery banks, I really test the longevity, how long they last. However, the battery banks I do continue using. If they should fail within a year or two or three or four, I will update you and I will update also the description in this video. So as a disclaimer, the Atom Power Lithium battery bank was provided by Vic Off-Road free of charge for testing and review purposes. However, I've not been paid for this review and Vic Off Road has no influence over this review or the outcome. As a matter of fact, they do see the review the same time you see it on YouTube. So let's start with the specs of the Atom Power AP500X. The AP500X is by far the lightest unit of all the units I looked into. It weighs only 4.8 kg and the feel is probably the most plasticky. It does not feel bad but definitely not as solid as the Blue Eddy or the Gold Zero. All buttons and output ports are at the front of the unit and only the charging and mini Anderson plug are on top of the unit towards the front. The output port selection is quite good, with a 60 watt USB-C in and out and a second 18 watt USB-C out. You have two USB-A ports, one 18 watt fast charging port and one 5 volt 2.4 amp regular port. You also have a 12 volt 8 amp USB cigarette lighter socket. The unit has an on and off switch and a separate on off switch for DC and AC. On the right hand side you have two 220 volt AC power receptacles. However, you may notice that there is an issue with them which I will explain a little later. The LCD display has good readability under normal conditions but becomes more difficult to read in bright sunlight. The information provided is simple what in and out, a one quarter incremental battery status and also a battery percentage in 1% increments. It will also show you if DC and AC are switched on. The Atom Power also has a detachable light which comes in quite handy. So after we looked at the outputs, let's see how we can charge the unit. The unit has a built-in 100 watt MPPT solar controller. 100 watt unfortunately is not very much. I mean, I don't really have any newer panel below 200 watt. However, I found an old 40 watt panel and uh, the MPPT controller certainly does its job. So I do have an Atom Power 300 watt panel. It's pretty overcast so that's never gonna be anywhere near that. So let's see what that brings in. Okay, and it brings in now around 36 watt. So 300 watt, it's definitely not 300 watt, like most of these panels really. The only panel I have really seen 
give nearly full output is the red arc panels so that's a 300 watt panel but realistically we're getting in now would be a bit hard to read 50 43 watt in regards to charging from AC, the unit comes with a 140 watt silent AC charger, but you also can charge simultaneously via the USB-C in with 60 watt. The USB-C charging I really like because if you forgot your charger, it means you still can charge the unit just with a USB-C cable. So with AC and the USB 60 watt charger, you charge with 200 watts. If you only use a USB-C, you can charge with the maximum of 60 watts. However, that still means overnight you can fully recharge the unit. As I mentioned, the unit has no pass-through charging, so you cannot charge the atom power and at the same time charge another device. This atom power unit uses a lithium chemistry, which is not that often used. I have to read it. It is a lithium ion Li. NiCOMnO2. It has a fairly high energy density and that means the unit is reasonably light. However, this chemistry also has a fairly low cycle rate. So after 300 cycles to 80% depth of discharge, you only have 80% capacity left. As a comparison, the Bluetti Life PO4 I reviewed, you can have 2500 cycles down to 80%. So it really depends on your usage. In regards to the 500 watt unit, the actual usable power is a little less. The fully charged unit provided 450 watt output for 54 minutes. When running the unit close to the maximum power, the internal fan started to go on and after the unit switched off, I had to wait for half an hour and let the unit cool down before I could recharge it. So let's now have a look at the cons of this unit as I see them and found them. The biggest drawback for me probably are the 300 cycles to 80% depth of discharge. That is really of the lower end of all the batteries I have tested. If you only use the unit occasionally, it's still all right. But if you want to use this unit frequently, it won't last you that long. The second issue I found is that you can't use both AC uh, plugs at the same time. Unfortunately, the plugs are very close together here. So I can't plug in two standard plugs. Because the distance between the two plugs does not work for many of the AC plugs. It is good that the unit has a built-in MPPT solar controller. However, it's only 100 watt. So unless you still have a small 100 watt panel lying around, personally, I think 100 watt is too little nowadays. Not many people carry 100 watt panels around with them anymore. So I would have liked to see, say, at least a 200 watt MPPT solar controller. Another drawback for me is that the unit doesn't come with a dedicated 12 volt charger. Yes, you can use the 80 watt USB input to charge and that is a great feature which I really like. However, I still would have liked to see a dedicated 12 volt charger where you possibly can charge with a 100 watt or something like that. One other thing to keep in mind is that the unit doesn't have pass through charging. So for example, you can't charge a unit and at the same time charge also a device then from that unit. One other thing to consider is that the unit only comes with a one year warranty. Just gonna have to take that into account. If it's one of these longer plugs which works for merit and um, normal cigarette lighter plugs, this one is not very deep, so it doesn't really hold in here well. The Gold Zero Yeti 500X as well as the Bluetti EB55 had no issues accepting that plug. Again, I don't think any of these are deal breakers, but depending on your use, that may influence your purchase decision. So let's have a chat about the good things of this unit. I like this little light which you can take off. I use that a fair bit um, around the house. 
but also when I took the unit camping. I really like that the unit has a USB-C in and out. That means I can charge this unit with around 60 watt from any USB-C charger. Obviously, ideally, you want to have a high output charger with 60 watt or more. I tried to charge uh, this unit with a 65 watt uh, charger, but it will regulate back to 60 watt. So that should be no issue if you have a higher power charger. I also like that you have three ports with a reasonably high output. You have the 60 watt USB-C, you have an 18 watt USB-C and an 18 watt USB-A. So I really like that. And that's not something the previously tested um, Life Pure 4 battery packs had. One other good thing I discovered, for example, if you have an inverter in the car and you would like to charge the unit via an inverter, you can actually charge via AC power and at the same time via USB-C. So the AC um, charger provides around 140 watts and I can increase it to nearly 200 watts by at the same time plugging in a 60 watt USB-C charger. The unit has a mini uh, Anderson uh, plug. Good idea, I just don't know any device with uh, a mini Anderson plug. However, this may be useful to someone else. So there are the pros from my perspective. So what is my final conclusion? Do I keep the unit? Uh, will I continue using it? To be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm spoiled for choice. So I think for my purposes, I rather keep the units with higher cycle life. However, this unit has delivered what it said it would. I had no issues with it during my time using it. And it is around $250 cheaper, for example, than the Blue Eddy unit. So for an occasional user who doesn't want to spend that much money and uses these from time to time on a camping trip, I think. So would I recommend this unit? Look, it really depends on your use case. The unit has done everything it said it would do. I think the quality is all right. The features, albeit not crazy, they are right. It covers all the basic stuff. And if you need a unit which you only use occasionally, you don't want to spend too much money, I think it is not a bad buy. However, if you want to use the unit frequently, I probably would look at something with a different lithium chemistry, which gives you more life cycles. Before I leave, I always have the occasional person commenting that if I have been given the product for free for review purposes, it is a paid review or I do paid reviews. As a matter of fact, I don't do any paid reviews, even though I get often requests for it. Usually I just delete them right away, but let me show you one example here, which I received recently and it would have actually fitted quite well because I'm testing and reviewing a few of the portable battery packs at the moment. And this offer I received from EcoFlow, a unit which actually looked all right. EcoFlow contacted me, asked me whether I would like to review one of the units. I sent them my review guidelines, which clearly stipulates there are no paid reviews. I will never have a predetermined outcome, but always report it how I find it. However, they then offered me a unit for free and a thousand dollar on top of it for a 90 second positive review. Even though that would have been good money, I declined that because I just will not do positive paid reviews unless I tested the product and I find it positive. This is just one example that I don't do cash for comments and I hope it puts some of these naysayers to rest. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you got something out of this quick review. Keep in mind my channel is completely self-funded. So if you like my videos, if you like to support me, please head over to Patreon or to buy me a coffee and maybe shout me a coffee or two. Please also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. 
and please hit the notification bell because I don't do videos every week and if you have notifications enabled you will hear when my next video is out. Vic Offroad also provided me an affiliate code so if you consider purchasing one of the units I post the affiliate link in the video description and this gives me a very small kickback which will help me continue making the videos. Thank you very much and I hope to see you along the tracks.